Much like poker machines for adults, video games are designed to get us in. This enthralling, rapid-fire world is challenging, rewarding, and a lot of fun. It's all in a night's work. Really? And I just got killed again. Well, is that because you're talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> but for kids like 13-year-old Sam and 14-year-old Logan, both smart and sensitive, there is no easy way out even when they want to escape it. I don't want to be that one of them kids that drop out and play your game and stuff like that. I want to actually get somewhere in life. Sounds like right now you don't feel like that's in your control. Mm. Why does it upset you? I don't know. Sam has missed most of this school year and Logan hasn't been to school for two years. What do you need to get through those school gates? I don't know. I've been trying to work that out for a while now. I can't really ever figure out why I can't go. Like, I would go, but I don't know why I can't, though. I just can't. Mm. No? In psychological terms, this is an emergency. And school refusal, people who can't go to school, that's an emergency uh, in, in our society because that's where we learn about the social world. The populations of these that South It's Australia easy to judge Logan and his family, but Dr Tanvir Ahmed says for whatever reason, going to school is literally terrifying for this boy. On a school bus, the ratio... I think for us, it, the equivalent might be that if we're going into a room where there is something life-threatening. Uh, your heart might race, you might start hyperventilating, you'd get all this adrenaline telling you that there is something really scary out there and do not go there. These are the signals we'd get, you know, they're very biological. That's what he's getting just about attending school. For Logan and kids like him, it's much more comfortable to exist in video games. And at this Sydney gaming parlour, you can see how many are drawn to them. Those playing are plugged in and tuned out to everything and everyone else. So how many hours are you playing these sorts of games on whatever device? Um, probably around six hours a day. Six hours a day? Yeah. So Jai, how old were you when you started gaming? <laughs> About three years old. You were about three years old? Yes, I was. <laughs> My dad was a very big gamer and he just kind of got me into it at a young age and I've been addicted ever since. <laughs> Education coach Jill Sweetman warns the impact of excessive gaming is dire and long-term. It's not just a game. This game is a platform, it's a tool, it's, a, it's an element that has been so magnificently and exquisitely crafted to engage these children and adults more and more and more. And that's where it's insidious. And neuroscience provides the proof. As gaming becomes their sole focus, children's brains are irrevocably shaped and changed. I think the best way to describe it is to talk about what's called apoptosis, which is really planned brain death. And that occurs from the time the child is almost born. It's already getting rid of brain cells that are not being used. And what worries me most is that if so much time is devoted to just entertainment, under the auspices, the control of game designers, over a long period of time, what are we really losing? And those brain cells can't be gotten back in later life. Back in his den, it's no surprise really, but killing off brain cells is not something that scares Logan. Do you worry uh, what effect all these hours in these games might be doing to you? Not really, I'm not really worried at all. Because I don't really see that there's a problem with it. Like, sure there's mean that I spend all my time and don't go to school and I could get my parents in trouble. But it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really make me be like, oh, I should stop, you know? I just 
keep playing. Just don't think about it. How much do you worry about not being able to get off them, ever? Mm, I worry about myself and my health and my... I worry at the fact that I might never see my family again. Like, I've just been drawn into the video game world and I can't get out of it. It must be very frightening. Mm. So you just don't feel like you've got the strength just to turn it off and walk away from it? No, I can't. You can't? You really feel you've tried to do that? Yeah. It was very hard to ask a young child in their primary school years to be the police, to be the monitor of their own fun. And in the home environment, if there are guidelines, if there are rules, but there are no real life consequences, the child works out very quickly what they can get away with. Coming up, why not take it away? Take all the devices away, stop the gaming, why not? It's not worth the abuse to us. It turns into an absolute screaming match. Saving Sam and Logan. Logan, come back! I feel like I miss the old me. So how much would you like some help? Tough love. To beat a tougher problem. Hope. I'll have to find him. He's in there. I'll never give up. That's next on 60 Minutes. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.